Hey there, my name is Ryan Dossie, and in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about escape clauses or what are known as like contingencies in a contract. If you're wholesaling a house or you're looking into like wholesale real estate, these are often used to get you out of your contract if you can't find a buyer. Let's dive right in and let's talk about it. I don't know who it is that's out there teaching some of these terrible concepts to new real estate investors, um, but I see like contracts being utilized by newbies that just don't make any sense when they're trying to wholesale real estate. Uh, for starters, partner approval is absolute trash. I've actually heard people on podcasts be like, yeah, it's great because they don't know who your partner is. It, it could be your cat. Like, that's not how you do business. Um, we actually were using one of these like template contracts that I got off of Bigger Pockets years ago, and I had a seller try to pull out, and we actually went into a little bit of like a, not a legal battle, but their attorney was talking to my attorney, and their attorney pointed out, and mine agreed with the fact that you actually can't sign a contract that you can't commit to without somebody else's approval. So that actually made the agreement there null and void and we couldn't do anything when the seller refused to sell us their house because somebody else offered them more money. So partner approvals, just dumb. Uh, you don't need it. The only real contingencies that I'm using are inspections and clear title. So. Our inspections, we're not doing this like wholesaler BS of I need 60 days to close and I need a 60 day inspection window where I can pull out like at any time for any reason. Typically with us, we're doing anywhere from 14 to 21 days, just depends on the project. And we are actually getting like full blown inspections done. It's not just an excuse to like walk partners through. One of the big things if you have to ever pull out of an agreement is setting proper expectations. Hey, these are the systems that I'm assuming are in this shape. If the inspection reveals differently, I can't do the deal at this price, right? Kind of setting up for that retrade. So during our inspection, we're typically doing a full-blown inspection and we're also getting some buyers through, but we wanna actually know if there's stuff that's wrong with the property that we weren't aware of. We're not just calling it an inspection and getting people through there and like have no intention of closing on the deal. It's actually extremely rare that I don't buy a property that I go under contract and tell somebody that I'm gonna buy. The reason for that, we're making offers that make sense for us, assuming the inspection checks out. So worst case scenario, if I make somebody an offer to buy their property and none of my buyers want it, I'll just do the deal myself. In fact, I've even posted several videos lately of deals that none of my buyers want that I just took down and flipped myself. Now, when you're just starting out, which some of you guys probably are, uh, I wasn't in a position that I could do that. I was in a position that like, I didn't have the cash, so I was trying to find somebody else to buy it, which is what led me to reverse wholesaling. Because why would you make somebody an offer and not be able to sell it if you analyze the deal right and you estimated your repair costs right? That just wouldn't happen, right? If you truly got a property at a good discount, accounted for repairs and left plenty of margin for an end buyer, you should have no problem selling it. So if you're struggling with running comps or estimating repair costs, just check out reverse wholesaling. I'll link to a video we did on that above, but you don't have to run comps, you don't have to estimate repair costs, you don't even have to come up with your offers. An end buyer or two will do all of that for you. Um, but I will link to that above. If you're not watching this on YouTube, be sure to check us out on YouTube, the way you don't miss out on kind of some of those additional resources that we throw out. Financing is another one of those contingencies that realistically should not be in your contract if you're wholesaling. I've seen wholesalers use these contracts that are like, we're paying cash, we're buying it as is, but we need to do an inspection and you have to pay for any repairs that come up. And on top of that, um, it's cash, but I have to be able to get a mortgage that just like, you're contradicting yourself. The only time I have a financing like contingency in a contract is if I need to go actually out and get a mortgage, like when I bought the house that my wife and I live in that I'm currently standing in. 
When it comes to like my normal deals, I'm using private money or my own cash, so I'm not using a financing contingency. One that you do wanna make sure you always have in though is clear title. Um, that prevents somebody from selling you a property, or let's say you do a title search and problems come up. If you don't have this in there, um, you might have to do something what's called like a quiet title suit. It's normally about 3,000 bucks. If there's title issues, if it was bought or sold at auction, something of that nature. If you don't have that clause in there, they can be like, well, yeah, you, you still have to buy the house, even though it's got all these problems, which like, that's not what you want. What you want is your contract to state that they're required to provide that. So if there's, there are issues that come up, you can say, hey, you need to pay to get a quiet title suit done. Per our contract, you're required to give me, you know, clean, clear, marketable title, right? Um, my whole thought process of just kind of highlighting what some of these contingencies or escape clauses are that like newbie wholesalers use when they're trying to get their first deal done. So you just don't want to be a weasel. Um, the biggest thing you want to keep in mind in real estate is it's a pretty small niche, right? Like, yeah, it's competitive. There's a lot of people doing it, but word travels really, really fast. And your reputation is absolutely everything in this business. If you're lying to people to close deals, if you're doing this like, oh, you know, my, my cat said I can't buy the house crap, that's gonna come back to bite you. So before you even talk about like getting out of a contract, let's make sure you're using the correct escape clauses. Um, today's gonna be a little bit one of our like less formal videos. If you've followed our channel for any time at all, you know that on Fridays, which is when we often shoot our videos that come out on Saturday, uh, we go to get cookies. So I figure while on the way there, I can walk you guys through the first deal that I ever pulled out of, um, how it went, what went wrong, and kind of how to have that conversation. If you're already kind of, you've made some of these mistakes, you're under contract to purchase a property that you can't afford to pay what you offered or none of your buyers want it. So uh, let's head on over to the bakery. Not sure if you can see this on camera, but uh, I took a rock chip directly to this parking sensor. Um, I've always heard rumors of what they call the Ferrari tax, like everything's more expensive just because it's a fun car. Real quick, I just want you to guess how much that little parking sensor is uh, gonna cost me to have fixed. Um, the part itself is only $45, so okay, that's pretty reasonable. Um, however, it's actually paint matched to the same red that's on the car. So that little piece, they have to take off the front bumper, paint match and all that, $1,100 for something the size of a dime. So I figured it would be helpful to talk to you guys about the first deal that I ever had to pull out of, because if you're in that situation where you're trying to like terminate or cancel a contract because you messed something up, um, it's, it's never fun. So the first one that I ever did was actually probably like my second or third property that I ever got under contract. This was back in St. Louis, Missouri. And it was actually like a really, really uncomfortable situation. Um, I met the guy, he was an absentee owner, uh, walked the property, it was in like pretty rough shape, had some water damage, just like junk storage everywhere. They're kind of using it to just like store random antiques and stuff like that. And I was at the guy's house to sign the contract to initially like go under contract. And while I was there, he got the phone call that his wife passed away. And uh, he was like, I don't want to be alone. Do you mind hanging out with me till my kids get here? And I was like, no, like not at all. Right. So I spent hours with this guy just getting to know like him, his life story, his service history, like really, like really good connection. Right. Also like kind of a pretty intense emotional time. The guy's wife passed away from cancer while I was there signing the contract. Um, uh, let me clarify, we signed the contract before she passed away. I don't want you thinking that I like beat this guy up in his time of need. Um, so we were getting buyers through the house and um, had somebody that was interested in purchasing the house and they actually did like a full blown inspection. This was like way before I had capital to close on stuff or even really knew what I was looking at when it came to like construction issues and stuff. 
And the property ended up having like full blown mold inside the HVAC, inside the walls, because it had flooded and they never had it dried out. They didn't have circulation going or even power on. So it all just kind of like sat there and built up in like the humid Midwest, right? Um, which leads us to this point of like, it wasn't just a, hey, I can no longer buy your house for this price. And we weren't buying it for much, right? It was maybe like 15 or 20,000 bucks. It went to like, this house is beyond saving. Like nobody's gonna come along and put in the kind of money this place needs in order to make it livable, right? So best advice I can give you if you're in like a position like this is to just be super honest and super transparent. Like, hey, I dropped the ball on this, or uh, in this instance, it was like, hey, I, I missed um, the extent of the water damage. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to buy the property for this. Um, now, a lot of people think you can just like cancel a contract. Technically, to have all the paperwork in line, you actually have to do what's called like a mutual release, where they sign it, you sign it, and then the earnest money deposit goes back to you. Now, if you're still in that inspection window that we talked about earlier, love that I'm driving with my knee on camera. <laughs> I got that skill from my dad. In my car. Yeah, in your car. Nobody can eat a bowl of Wheaties while they drive their work truck, quite like my dad. Um, but if you're still in that inspection window and you end up having to cancel a contract, the earnest money does go back to you. Um, that's how contracts are written. However, if you're not still in that window, and you're past that, technically your earnest money just goes to the seller unless they say you can have it. So that's kind of like the cost of you messing up that deal potentially, right? While we're on the subject of earnest money, I always do 500 to 1,000 bucks minimum. I think people that do like, oh, I did a $3 EMD are just clowns. So don't be that guy. Um, all of this can be way easier if you set proper expectations from day one. So we'll tell sellers like during the inspection window, do not move out. Do not go buy a new car with the proceeds that you think you're gonna get from this. Don't go buy another house. Don't go book a trip or anything. We have to verify all of our like expectations on this deal to make sure there's nothing that we didn't miss and we'll let you know when we're like, hey, like 100% moving forward, this is gonna close, you're good to go. If you have that conversation up front and then you find stuff during the inspection, hey, we found some unexpected things. I know I told you it was at blank, but really this is what we're at. Um, that's a much easier conversation. Same thing on the flip side, you find stuff that makes it just a non-deal for you, right? Um, you know, mold or structural issues, or it's got knob and tube wiring, and you have to terminate it, they're not like, they haven't already spent that money in their head. Now, in theory, they shouldn't do that anyway, but you tell somebody you're buying their house for X and they're just gonna be like, oh, okay, cool, I'm, I'm getting $20,000, right? So always, always, always set proper expectations, makes it way easier to like renegotiate if you need to on price or to end up just not moving forward with a purchase of a house was a nice bump that I just destroyed in your car. I'm sorry. Um, so that was kind of the first one that I ever did. And good timing. We're actually at the bakery. All right, show me your stuff. I appreciate you sharing your mask with me. That feels real, real COVID compliant. All right, we'll cut that part out. Uh, oh yeah. They did like a whole like March Madness thing where, uh, They've been like every week they'll put out four flavors. And then for the past four weeks, people vote on like which of the four was their favorite. And this is the cream of all the crops. So still don't know what they're called. It's like, can I have the macaroons? <laughs> What's up guys? So we are here to check on the flip as well. Did we even tell them we were coming here or are we just randomly cutting to me inside a- I don't remember, let's just continue. Away? All right, cool. Um, so super fun with vacant houses. People like to do things like snoop around and we definitely caught the neighbor as we were pulling up, like throwing away trash in our trash can, who then just kind of like maintained eye contact and slowly walked back to his house, which is next door. Um, so that's fun. But uh, here we are in the flip. Let me show you guys where we're at, what we have left to do. 
and I really, really need your feedback on how you guys think we should price this thing. We've got two different thoughts um, that uh, Justin and I are kind of going back and forth on, and I want to know what you would do. So flooring is down, uh, lighting is up. We're going to have a center island right here with kind of like the seating, you know, bench kind of deal. We put in this window because this is going to be like a dining room table area, which I'm super glad we did. I think it makes the fact that we don't have any windows in the kitchen a little bit less obvious. Um, tons of can lighting in. We removed like the popcorn and stuff from the ceiling. Little bonus room. I don't think anybody can argue that there's not enough lights in here. I'm actually not doing much out here. Uh, we've got the new back doors in. So those are looking nice. Um, if you remember, that was like an old school, like double steel garage door kind of setup. Got the panel box moved and installed. Really the only things we have left to do, uh, we need to put in a water heater. We've got to put in the kitchen and the appliances uh, and redo the HVAC, landscaping, cleaning, and we're done. So uh, we're hoping to be like on the market end of March, beginning of April. So uh, on this particular property, the comps are a little bit all over the place. There's stuff in like the high 180s that's not nearly as nice as this. And then there's some stuff that's currently on the market that's a little bit nicer than this that's in like the high 220s, low 230s. The market is hot as it is realistically, we've thought all along, we'd sell for somewhere between like 205, 215. Um, seeing how this thing is kind of turning out and how it's looking, I think we'll probably be closer to like the 215, but I'm currently thinking of, we price it at like 199 and push for a little bit of a bidding war. There's really like nothing on the market here in Pensacola, sub 200. The other option is we listed it like a 213, maybe we still get a bidding war. Um, what do you guys think? Would you go like really low, a little bit lower than you want? There's nothing that's really livable, let alone remodeled sub 200. So um, I could go either way. I think I'm leaning towards price it low, move it super fast, let there be a feeding frenzy. I think Justin's leaning more towards price at like 213 and try to get like close to what we want. Um, what are your thoughts? What would you do? Normally our strategy is we'll list it on like a Tuesday or Wednesday and we won't allow any showings until Saturday. And then we'll do like an open house. So there should be tons of people, tons of offers, kind of give us your highest and best by like a Monday or Tuesday. But drop in the comments below what you do. Let um, me show you the rest of the house and then we'll call this a wrap. So this was the, um, you know, new vanity, new flooring, um, lights on a motion sensor that just went off. Ugh, all right, there we go. Um, I actually think we need to swap out the bulbs in there. I don't like how like orangey they make it look, but that tile in the tub, if you remember, was like kind of an awful brown color that we reglazed white. I think it actually looks super, super nice. So uh, we got away with doing that, not having to replace the whole thing. Flooring is down, ceiling fans are up. Um, you know, all the doors have been repainted, cleaned up, all that good stuff. And then last but not least, we've got the master bath that's like, 99% done. Uh, I just need to put up a rod, uh, put up a uh, shower fixture, but uh, getting close here to kind of the, the final steps. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Uh, I know we kind of covered a lot with contingencies and contracts, the first deal I ever pulled out of and how to pull out or retrade if you need to. Um, I'm super excited about getting this flip on the market and seeing what it goes for. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with us. Be sure to like and subscribe. We're a little bit all over the place today, testing some new tech and things of that nature. So hopefully you don't mind. Um, as always, feedback is appreciated. Talk to you guys next time.